How you doing? Welcome to the Truth Revolution Records podcast. We're here with the man himself, the man of the hour, Daryl Yokely. Say what's up. Hey, was that was that Johnny O'Neill impression really being recorded? Yeah, it was recorded. <laughs> we don't got to put it on if you don't uh, want. Oh, no, it's okay. I, I apologize, Johnny, but miss you. <laughs> <laughs> But so we're over here uh, talking about his new record. So the single just dropped. Daryl, how's it feel? Uh, it feels great. You know, I'm getting a lot of uh, good feedback from people who listen to it. And then it's uh, made its way onto the radio now. Not only the single, but, you know, some other tracks. So it's going. It's going. Nice. Yeah. And I, I, I've i been. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, his latest record, Pictures at an African Exhibition. And you're actually going to get an in-depth analysis of what's going on uh straight from the mind of the creator himself daryl yokely creator of the project are you you're not the creator are you i am the creator i'm the oh. all-knowing i'm i'm the it. Oh, you know everything about this project <laughs> i know everything there is to know about this project <laughs> so um let's start let's start with um just the overall picture the inspiration um and what you're actually putting out the overall picture well uh this project is loosely based off of uh modest mazursky's pictures at a exhibition i was about to say pictures at an african exhibition Sorry, he may have done something like that too we, we all know so that's the, the remix edition that never got released they, they shut it down <laughs> yeah so hopefully they don't give me for no copyright if that's if that's the case <laughs> but <laughs> so yeah i based the project off of that and then but it's a little bit different whereas uh Mazursky he he wrote the music to his friend uh, Victor Hartman's paintings and I uh wrote the music and then told my friend David Emmanuel Noel uh is a London based artist I asked him to write uh not write uh paint some works to the music that I wrote so that's how we got the 13 tracks along with 13 pieces of visual yeah. art That's what's up and then the music so as far as your so your concept um, of, you know, connecting the music with the pictures or the paintings um, is coming out of Mazorsky. And then, am I saying that right? Mazorsky? Uh, Correct me. I think it's Mazorsky, but I, Mazursky, I'm not, I'm okay. not sure. You know, I mean, I, I spelled his, rank, his name wrong. Uh, I found that out just a few days ago. Oh, but, yeah? I mean, no one can really get on me about that. But, oh, that's all good. Yeah, because I had it on the, my score. I have the score of the, of the, of the piece uh, by Boozy and Hawks, and I think that's how they had it spelled. So oh, okay. It's a, it's blame Boozy and Hawks. <laughs> 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 that's what's up. Um, yeah, but... Um, <clears throat> What what I'm trying to get at now is now that you you have that concept, something that you drove from. What about the music itself, the actual um, themes that you're going by? Because I noticed, I'm you know for those of you that um, aren't hip to the album yet, um, when you get it, you're gonna realize that I'm on the record. So I'm not actually talking about it because I'm on the record. It's actually an amazing piece of work. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll but, pay you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and also, I run the podcast here at, at TRR for now. But um, what I'm getting at is when when you brought the music in, I noticed the theme. There's a there's a reoccurring theme. So does that have anything to do with um, the the titles, the theme itself? Uh, in a in a sense, I guess like uh, that theme is supposed to kind of represent human nature and like mankind. So like you know the first uh, sunrise kind of is like the the dawn of mankind. It's like the inception of it, where we're kind of like this naive being in the in the in the grand scheme of things, and we're just fig you know figuring our way out and how to survive and everything. And the theme does pop up quite a few times. Um, in right. some type of different form, um, you know, form. I kind of try to do that consciously throughout every work. Although sometimes I just went with a different melody if I was hearing that. Is it's a da 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 da, right? Oh, the uh, first sunrise is bo be do bo bo dee. That's it. Be dum boom. Sorry, if I'm singing out of tune, that's why I play saxophone. <laughs> but it was better than my rendition. <laughs> but th that's that is one of the main themes, right? Yes, uh -huh. and I mean, it shows up in Ominous Nightfall, The Birth of Swing, um, you know, even Echoes of Ancient Sahara, and it might be different rhythmical uh, concepts based off of it, you know, but um, in, in general, I kind of based all the melodies loosely off of some type of pentatonic idea. Right, right. 
the oldest scale that uh, is known to man, right? I think so. You know, yeah, I was. I remember reading a story about um, uh, uh, them digging up a flute, ancient flute, and um, I guess they recreated the flute holes and and the flute how how thick it was, et cetera, et cetera, and um, found out that the scale that it played was a pentatonic scale. So. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you know, a lot of the kalimbas and um, mabiras, you know, they're tuned in, you know, pentatonics, if I remember right, you know. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you find it in every culture around the world, so. Yeah, there's a lot of drummers that tune their actual drums from the bass drum all the way up in pentatonic scale. Yeah, that that might be a, a separate podcast. We can give a master class and do, like, ethnomusicology type no, stuff this on is the this. Pod, this is where it goes. Yeah. This is what they come for. <laughs> what I'm talking about. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, every every podcast, we'll get into something. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, amazing work. But, you know, it doesn't stop there. Every You know, most jazz musicians, they'll put together an album, um, and it's an incredible amount of work. It's like making a movie. I, I always refer to making a CD very similar to making a movie. Like all the moving parts, you know, you have to mix it, master it. A lot of people don't understand the entire process. I was thinking about doing a mini documentary about me making my next record and just you know filming each separate part mm-hmm. and then kind of putting it all together so people know all the different steps because it's ridiculous. Yeah, they would appreciate the the whole album more, I think, if they saw what goes into it. Mm-hmm. And and on top of that, so all of the writing that you did for the band, and then then you decide, hey, you know what? This isn't enough work for me. <laughs> I'm gonna add a wind ensemble. <laughs> Uh-huh. How'd that come? I'm I'm pretty sure it didn't come across like that. But was the project envisioned with the Wind Ensemble, what, or 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 separately? Uh yes, it was envisioned with the Wind Ensemble. Um, I wasn't quite sure how to go about it, but I mean, I I kind of was influenced by a project that uh, Miguel Zenon did a couple years ago, Alma Adentro, I think it came out 2011. Right. Yep. Uh, where he wrote some music with Wind Ensemble and uh. It got me thinking, you know, maybe I could do something similar because I, I did classical studies and, you know, I played in wind ensembles and, you know, did, you know, play, practice right. concertos and stuff. So I'm coming from that vein. So I was like, you know, you have that experience. Yeah. I wanted to, you know, find a way to meld those worlds together. So and, you know, it, it's based off of an orchestral piece. So I was like, you know, where, where's the orchestra at? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I needed the orchestra. What, what's the wind ensemble <clears throat> made up of? Uh, the instrumentation is... Uh, two flutes, oboe slash English horn, depending on on the piece. Uh, two B flat clarinets, bass clarinet, uh, bassoon, two B flat trumpets, uh, French horn, trombone, and bass trombone. So that's twelve pieces <clears throat> on top of the quintet or or sextet. Uh, uh, double drum quintet, yeah. Right. So yeah. <laughs> it, so that's that's eighteen pieces right there. It's like a big band you're writing for yeah pretty much um i had a question about the process mm-hmm. um once you go over the process of how you recorded all of that onto one cd i mean this is something that you know i i took notes on and i'm sure a lot of musicians that are recording records would take notes on as well but what was your process how did you put all this together on one cd uh, we recorded the quintet, you know, uh, you, myself, Lucas, Wayne, and uh, our our special guest, Nasheed Waits. We all recorded that 2015, I believe. Um, and then it took me about a good year after, you know, we, we mixed it. We kind of did a rough mix of what we did in the studio. You know, and I kind of came up with that basis there. And then I wrote the music to what was going to be, you know, the, the takes after that. Right. So, you know... Um, I guess I, I think I was talking with you about it. That that's that's how uh, Wayne Shorter had did Alegria. Maybe is that is that the name of the yes, record? Yep, yeah, yep. Um, where he kind of you know took the the, the small group and and then did the that's the, right. That's right. the the macro later. You know, uh, where he wrote the music to what they did, and I think that was a great way because I um, personally I feel like it allowed us as a quintet to not be too constrained. In, in the studio and just kind of play and then, you know, adapt the wind ensemble right. to what we're doing, you know. So I think that worked really good for this project. Yeah, it really did. Mm-hmm. And um, the single's out, so you can actually um, get a taste for what the album is going to, um, what the album has to offer, um, a small part. I mean, every song is different and it's different arrangements. Some of them 
uh, don't even have much improvisation on them. And others are, in some cases, everybody's improv, Im- improvising at the same time. Yeah. So it has a <laughs> huge gamut of like different sounds and uh, you definitely won't get tired of listening to this. And um, Daryl's killing it, the whole album. No, likewise, <laughs> likewise, likewise. And I'm not just saying that because you're on it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ed. Thanks. We just, we just compliment each other the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I want one more thing before um, you head out. So you, we have this single that's up there, and it's available now. Mm-hmm. Um, this podcast should be going up in a couple days or by tomorrow. And I really want you guys all to purchase this. If you don't have it already, I know that this the Kickstarter backers they usually get their records first which is why we encourage um supporting the kickstarter um you know situation Mm -hmm. um but if you don't have it you can actually get the first single and uh, reserve the cd for when it drops um and that's going to be dropping on april 20th Mm -hmm. right and uh, we're going to have some videos coming really soon um presenting some of this music live so be uh, on the lookout for that. But you can go to truthrevolutionrecords.com and click on our store button. And the CD's ready, uh, at least the single's ready. And uh, just download it uh, right now as you're listening to this podcast. you probably do it from your phone if you wanted to. Um, we're going to let you know when um, we release it on iTunes, which we usually release a little later than our Bandcamp. Um, because uh, Bandcamp really supports the label a lot more. I think iTunes takes a ridiculous percentage, something like forty or sixty percent or something. But that's cool, though. I mean, you get a lot, you get a big reach. Um, yes, on exactly. ITunes, right. <laughs> so it, it has its benefits. But for right now, you can go ahead and go on to Bandcamp and get it. Um, it's Sound Reformation, Daryl Yokely Sound Reformation, pictures at an African exhibition, and the track that you're gonna download is entitled Ubuntu. Um, we played that on a previous podcast. Mm-hmm. And um, we're going to play a different one, a different track for people to hear. Um, if we do, what what do you suggest that we play um, out of the tracks that you have? Oh, I'm being put on the spot now. Right, I see. right on the spot. Cho- uh, choose a, choose a, 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 a son or a daughter. <laughs> Which one's your favorite son or daughter? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, hmm. For this, you know, I know people got stuff to do in the day, so maybe we'll do uh, stories from the village elder to keep it kind of short and sweet. So that's another one, and that one I think has a lot of uh, symbolism as far as like the African culture and and vibe, and in this track in particular, you know, because you start out the, right. the tune kind of imitating a kalimba. That's what's up, and um, thank you, Daryl, for coming and joining us on the podcast. Oh, no problem. You know, it's just bleak outside, so I wanted to come in here and and cheer myself up. That's what's (laughs) up. We'll do it again really soon. And want to thank you all for listening to the Truth Revolution Records podcast. Here is Stories from the Village Elder. Mm